What's up, gangsters or toasties, whatever you'd like to be called? I don't know. I've been calling people gangsters for like the last few years on my vlog channel, so I figured I should bring it over here. But well, some people are like, why are you calling us gangsters? So that's why. But maybe toasties, because, you know, for a while people have been asking to be called something, so maybe my toasty broskies. Ha! Ha! From the Broken Podcast. Anyway, Harvester. This is like the best game I've ever played, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's like got every freaking crazy thing I could ever hope for in a game. And of course, this is a series. A lot of people aren't going to watch it, but they're missing out. They are missing out, but not you. Not you. And also, to put a, to answer a few more of the comments I've been seeing, someone, uh, someone's like, is it common for people to have a god pulled up on the other screen and pretend to be thinking while they're reading it? Yes, it is. It is extremely common. I'm not actually pretending to be thinking. I'm just like, hmm, because I'm trying to read. But it's like, kid, why, why, do you, why would you use a god? Why, why don't you just play the game? Well, this is the argument. This is a point-and-click game. You can get lost in a point-and-click game for hours. I am using a non-spoiler guide, so it pretty much just tells me where to go and who to talk to. So, I don't get bored or annoyed playing the game. So when these moments do happen, I can be like, Ha ha! I still like this game! Instead of, oh, finally something freaking happens after I had to go back and forth between the jail and the post office to figure out this and this and this and this. <clears throat> And also, it's, I edit this a lot only because there's a whole lot of just junk that doesn't matter. And I'm not cutting anything out that's important. I'm cutting out a lot of, oh, hey, Steve, I heard you have amnesia. You're such a kidder, Steve. You should join the lodge. You're getting married, Steve. The people say a lot of the same stuff. A lot of the same stuff. So I just, like, cut it out. Cut it out. Or if it's just, like, a really long scene to where, like, like the, I think I cut out the butcher, most of the butcher scene. He, they they kind of talk a little bit, but like nothing important. He's like, hey, you can take over for your dad for 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I'll just cut that out. So anyway, you're not missing anything important. And this is the day two on the last episode. We got our lodge application and uh, we have been accepted into the lodge. Well, no, we haven't been accepted into the lodge yet. I take that back. I'm completely wrong. Um, but we had some nightmares. What else happened? A lot of stuff, a lot of crazy stuff happened. Like the firemen, the, uh, the homosexual firemen brigade. That was, uh, odd. And some people were like, I don't know if I'm offended by how they represent gay people in this game. Well, you haven't been offended by anything else in this game. Everything in this game is offensive. So <laughs> don't, don't be like that. Anyway, so let's get to it. We are, I th Think. What do you want, Steve? What are we supposed to do here? Still sick? That's right. I think I got the flu. Maybe you'd feel better if you stopped watching television and went to bed. Uh. Maybe you'd be quiet with a steak knife in your heart. Oh, snap! What? Just leave me alone, Steve. Believe me, you got your own problems. <laughs> okay. Good. Fine. We'll see you later. <laughs> Where are you going, Steve? Where are you going? Go talk to Mom. People have been telling me there's like a, a thing with mom that we can do. Let's see. What's up, Hello, girl? dear. How are you today? She doesn't say anything. But there's supposed to be an Easter egg. So, pardon my French. What a thing to say to your mother. Was that an invitation now that your father is out of action? <laughs> yeah, how about Maybe it? later, dear. Right now I have housework to do. Though you can watch if you want. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Mom! Mom! <laughs> what? Uh, I almost expected a scene to happen. <laughs> bloody sneakers. Oh, man. Here you go, buddy. Have some bloody sneakers. Swell. Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gein Memorial. That's where they meet every day. About 3.45, as soon as everyone has gone home. Sometimes I hide in there beforehand. Daddy-o, I see some stuff that's real nasty. Take it from me. You made a good swap. All right. Well, thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. <laughs> see some nasty stuff, huh? I think that's at the school, right? Room closet key. All right. Oh, my! Hello. <laughs> Hello. 
You guys in there, you don't, you don't look so surprised now that I just, I just caught you. I mean... <laughs> ah! Huh? You're busted! What? Screwing in the school broom closet? What will people think? <laughs> Are you blackmailing us, you little shit? <laughs> Calm down, Mr. Harold. Steven would never do that. He's a smiley bear. But we should give him a token of our appreciation for his silence. Here, Steven. Take this baseball bat. You'll find it quite useful. Uh, maybe I could use a good solid bat. That a boy. Take the bat, and we'll take the photo. However, will I keep the children in line now? <laughs> I have a spare I can bring in tomorrow, unless you'd prefer a chainsaw this time. I'll talk to Mrs. Phelps. Wow, a chainsaw. <laughs> oh, poor kids. Smack them upside the head with the chainsaw. All right. Okay, I'm here at the post office. I'm supposed to use some lube that I have. Where is it? Vitamins, cough medicine, aspirin. Uh, the lube on this key. Manual key. Should loosen it up a bit. It sounds pretty loose now. And some lobby manhole key. Take it. Put it in my pocket. Hooray! We did it. We did it. We did it. Nah, 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 nah. Nightfall descends upon harvest. Ooh. That tractor, though. Ooh. It's so sexy and rusty. I wonder if zombies come out at night. I haven't been out at night yet. All right, here we are at the cemetery. And let's see what's going on here today. <gasps> Mr. Potsdam. What are you doing? Oh, you're digging a grave. Look at that butt! So sexy. What are you doing here at this hour, Mr. Potsdam? <laughs> He's ready to fight. Uh-oh. I'm burying our cat. She passed away and I'm burying her. Go away and mind your own business. Oh my. Then, where's the cat? I, I left her at home. Now leave me alone! <laughs> what is down the ground? Matches? Matches prepared especially for your wedding. Pick them up. Put them in my pocket. This kind of stuff can come back to haunt you. Okay. Well, I should probably leave him alone then. It sounds. What are you. Like, for real, what are you burying? Ah, well. Whatever. Manhole key, there it is. Whoop. Aw, oh, yeah. Small passageway leads to the sewers. Get in there. Who ready to fight some alligators? Who wants some? What's this? Sewer valve. I got my shovel. Gonna use it here on the corroded wall. And I have a hole. Going in. Damn the oil pan. Maybe they like drain the car. Like, oh, is that blood? Anyway. So I'm in a garage, obviously. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can just go up, walk up under there and drain his stuff. Alright, let's see what we got. A pitchfork. Can I take that? In my pocket. Got it. Dolly. Put that in my pocket too, why not? Tool bench. Good, he's on his tool bench. What's he got? Flashlight. Can't take it. A mallet. Can't take it. What's that? Phillips screwdriver. Can take that. Is that gas can? Do I need another one? No. Torch. Tucker. Tucker, 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 Tucker. <laughs> Examine the poster. 1948 Sexist Tomboy Award. What? It doesn't, it doesn't look like she has any legs or arms. I'm just going to point that out. All right. <laughs> Can I exit? Can I get out of this, please? How do I... Oh, wait. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Oop. Just punch that. <laughs> I'm just checking the, the pressure in the tires. Uh, let's see. Screwdriver on the car did it what happened oh i scraped his car up why did it skip the freaking cutscene? why is it doing that it's being a jerk here lately it's just randomly skipping cutscenes, and i've had to replay some stuff sucks port it to the lodge apparently that's what we're supposed to do hey buddy so you have completed your first task now that you've scratched the tucker you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman. 
and bring it to me. Ooh, that doesn't sound bad. Very well then. Use whatever means necessary, but bring the cloth to me here and I shall give you your third task. Dream time. Again. So epic. So I guess it's the end of the night. It's night number two, right? Oh, back home. Ah, oh, time to take my shirt off again. Oh yeah. Flex all sexy like. Oh, we're so tired. Make the pants off. Ooh, what good is that? Are you in there? Uh, so I think it's the same scene as it was last time. Cut neck. Welcome to our order. Wow! Wow! Well, that eyeballs. Shocking people. Same scene over and over again. Maybe I'm living the same day over and over again. Oh god. With that shirt on. That's a huge bed, I just realized that. Unless this guy's really short. Oh well, let's get started with our next day, I guess. What do you want? I hear him at night, thrashing and moaning. I crawl out my window and see Mom's shadow on the shade. Pot holders on her hands, reaching for him. How can she do the stitches on him wearing those? Wouldn't she slip? What? Don't be silly. She wouldn't do that. Of course she'd slip. Maybe that's why he's not getting better. Oh, man. I heard that someone took Karen. Little Miss Perfect gonna get famous. Gonna get a picture on a milk carton. What? Yeah. Well, I heard that Karen was gone. So I went over to Miss Fitzgerald's house and asked if I could play with Karen. Yeah? Her mom just stood there, you know, in the doorway, and cried and cried. And I just stood there, wondering how long it would take for her to stop. But she didn't. Wow, what an evil kid. So I went inside and watched TV, because they've got color. Because Edna has money. I told you about color she TV. Runs she runs the diner believe. and all. And I said she was feeling vulnerable. So I asked her to fix me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she did. Wow. Then I went into Karen's bedroom and looked around for stuff I could take. While Edna was in the bathroom with the water running. But all that there was was girl stuff. So I came home. But it was fun while it lasted. This kid is a psycho. That's hilarious. You're evil. I'm evil? You don't know what evil is. <laughs> Mom <laughs> says the blood drive is coming, Steve. You'll like that. It's for a good cause. And only bad people don't give. All right. Good. S see Fine. you later, <laughs> creepy brother of mine. Ha! <laughs> uh. Hello, dear. How are you today? By the way, I spoke with Mr. Johnson and he's livid. Mm. Seems someone scratched up his priceless Tucker. If he finds out who, they'll be heck to pay. They'll be heck to pay. Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared. Oh, no. Karen was playing outside as Edna closed the diner, and that's the last anyone saw of her. So last night. Did she get lost? What day did she disappear? This happened Tuesday night. That's all I know, except for what's on the posters. Okay. All right, well, interesting. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Yeah, he's insane, too, just like everybody else in this town. Thanks, Mom. Let's go investigate the Johnson's residence, then. What's up, dude? Some rotten son bitch scratched my car. <sighs> my Tucker, my baby, my poor darling, my sweet cheeks. If I find out who did it, I'll kill him. Just kill him dead. I told that fool sheriff to beep up the patrols, but what does he care about? Nobody cares about a limp dick fat boy. Well, I'll make them care. I'll make them care. Did you hear that Karen disappeared? <laughs> what a change. 
just goes to show you what can happen without a man's stewardship in the house. It takes both a man and a woman to raise a child properly. It says so in the Bible. Oh, okay. But try to convince Edna of that? Oh, no. And now she's lost everything. Hmm. This might be a good time to drop in. While she's feeling vulnerable. What is up with the order? Hey, get out of here. People are all freaking Bye now. creeps. Go oh God, that face. Right, let's go talk to Edna, our DNA's diner, and see what she has to say about it. Hey, girl. I can't stop and chat, Steve. With Karen gone, if I stop, I think I'll lose my mind. I've got to keep busy. Busy. Excuse me. I just heard that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. Mm. You know, though I don't like to think ill of people or take pleasure in the misfortunes of others, I'd like to think it's a comeuppance for all the times that nasty man has bothered me. Hmm. Well then. Seems everyone's kind of against everybody around here. Well. Who else can lead me on... Maybe the sheriff knows something, maybe? Dwayne, what you think about it? Boy, the way you keep pestering me, you'd think you were feeling guilty about something. Are you? I, just, this is the first I understand you witnessed Miss Whaley's dispensing a little discipline at the school. And she thinks you may be uh, feeling a mite bent about it. Uh, I'm my own business, Sheriff. That's always the wisest course, boy. Sticking your nose where it doesn't belong can get you in a world of trouble. Especially if you're a gynecologist. <laughs> Heck, there isn't a psychiatrist around who disagree about what a calming influence a dent in the head can be. You can't argue with science, Steve. It's bigger than all of us. Science. You've been shooting off your mouth about me and Boyle, Steve. What? I got a report here that someone put a ding on Johnson's Tucker. <laughs> as honorary as Johnson is about that old car, I suppose he had it coming. I imagine it was just some kids pulling a prank. I suppose you've heard the news about Edna's this daughter Karen disappearing. Uh, yeah, I'm very concerned. I wouldn't think about it too much if I were you. This is a serious crime. And this is no time for civilians to be nosing around playing cops and robbers. Uh, what about civic responsibility? Steve, I'd give this advice to my own son if I had one. Leave this be. This is not the kind of thing you should look into. Oh. Sow some wild oats, boy. Kick up your heels. Join the lodge. Join the lodge, Steve. And leave Karen to the professionals. All right. Stop on by any time, Steve. Thanks, Dwayne. Well, let's go talk to old Mr. Potsdam and see what uh what was he doing last night. Hey, Mr. Meat. You playing with your meat over there? <laughs> Did you say hello to your father for me? I haven't seen him. It's very important. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him that I hope he gets better soon and... And don't forget to remind him about his promise the regarding meat. the uh, meat. Right. I could use some good news right now. I just got the word. The order turned down my latest application. Looks like we'll be having the wedding at Morning Hands after all. Nice so, fun. what's new, Steve? Ah, uh, you know, just, uh... The daughter's missing. How could anyone do something so terrible to her? You think someone took her? I think? Oh no, see, it was a kidnapping, haven't you heard? The sheriff got a ransom note. Seems someone wants to dip into Edna's larder. Too bad such a sweet little thing has to suffer. Sad day, so uh... Where were you Tuesday night? That was a terrible night. Our upstairs toilet backed up. Pete Swell came over and fixed it. My back's still sore from helping him carry his stuff up the stairs. <laughs> Someone went and scraped up Johnson's car? Yeah. Can you imagine? 
He'd step in a bear trap and chew his own leg off rather than suffer a scratch tucker. Serves the rich bastard right, if you ask me. Man, nobody likes this guy. All right. Mr. Alibi. Let's see what little Stephanie's doing. Let's go to the bathroom first. Take a peek at the goods, you know. Oh, it's a new one. I mean, do people actually wear, uh, girl, girls wear all this fancy stuff up under clothes? I don't think so. Yeah, got my perv on. All right. Yeah, let's go see what's up with her. Hey, girl. Oh, they were both in there. If, if he was really in there fixing his toilet. Oh, man, anyway. Hey, girl. Steve, I'm so glad you came back. What have you been doing? No, you know. I visited the lodge. Talked to the sergeant at arms there. He knows that there's something out of whack here. He told me if I wanted to find out what it is, I should join the lodge. I've decided to join the lodge, Stephanie. I think the answer to all our questions is inside. That place. It's so sinister. Uh, maybe. You may be playing right into their hands. Did you think of that? Doesn't it seem like you're being herded toward the lodge? That's one of the things I hope to find out. I hope finding out doesn't get you killed. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. My faux mother keeps me up on the latest gossip. Not like she really wants to talk to me. More like she's feeding me information. Hmm. For instance, she told me that Mr. Johnson's tucker was vandalized. That's another weird thing. Every car I've seen drive by is a tucker. There were only 31 produced. What are the odds of that? That is weird. I've always wanted a tucker. Funny that Harvest would be full of them. Any hmm. idea who scratched the car? Why would you do something like that? It's part of the Lodge initiation. I see. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but getting into the Lodge is the best way to find out. By committing vandalism? It was a crime, Steve. Don't be so melodramatic about it. I've heard of worse fraternity initiations. Sorry. When you put it that way, I guess I was overreacting. Yeah, for real. I understand that a little girl is missing. That's true. That's right. Her name's Karen. I heard the pod parents talking about it downstairs. When did it happen? Tuesday night. God, that was a bad night for everyone. Tuesday, our upstairs toilet backed up. As if that wasn't bad enough, Mr. Potsdam was livid, almost irrational. Like the toilet had it in for him personally. Hmm. Through the wall, I kept hearing him ask somebody named Mr. Swell whether the toilet would be fixed by dark. And when Swell said it'd take most of the night to fix, Daddy totally lost it. Swell said he'd stay all night and fix it, but that didn't seem to help. Potsdam stormed out of the house and didn't come back till next morning. Hmm. Was he trying to flush something down the toilet? Uh, huh? Come back and visit me soon. That's weird. Okay. Oh well. Let's go and try to find the girl, I guess. That's probably my job. Put you in the face open. Put your plant! Punch that plant! Yeah. Alright, it's time to go to the cemetery and see what that dude is up to. Uh huh. The picnic table. Just kind of chilling there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I broke the picnic table. I'm pretty stout. Oh, wait. It's just a bench. Okay. Dig it up. Hey! Little girl, what are you doing in the, in the ground? Thank God I found you. Are you alright, Karen? I want to go home. Could you take me to my mommy's store? Or to the policeman? Can you tell me who did this to you? Mr. Potsdam told me he'd hurt my mommy if I told. He won't do anything, I promise. Tell me what happened. He made me play house. Uh oh. Then he dug a hole. Please, I just want to go home now. Please. Can you tell me your address, honey? I don't know. Just take me to the store or the policeman. Please, Mommy said to go to the policeman if I got lost, and I'm lost. 
Alright, Karen. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, are you gonna come with me? Bye. Yeah, put, put you oh, no punch her. <laughs> put you in my pocket. Is she just sitting underground? Perfectly chill about it. Karen scurries off ahead of you. Okay. Good. Let's go to your mom's. At the Edna's diner, there it is. And you see Oh okay. my god. Karen! Thank God. What happened? Found her in the graveyard. She was buried alive. And she claims Mr. Potsdam was responsible. Thank you, Steve. Thank you from both of us. Here. Here's the reward money. Take it and go. I need to be alone with my baby right now. Sweet. I got some reward money. How much money did I get? Where's the money? Did you actually give it to me? You're not lying to me, are you? No, oh, wait. That's a meet permission slip. Get you a free card. Reward money. There it is. Yeah. I just got paid. I just got paid. Da -da -da -da. Guess I better ask Mr. Potsdam about what's up, sir. If it isn't my favorite son-in-law, what brings you here again? Oh, you know. Uh... Yeah, I know what that crazy little bitch said, but it's not true. I was at home that night. Mrs. Potsdam will vouch for me. Isn't that right, Mrs. Potsdam? That's right, Mr. Potsdam. Hello, Steve. Care to stay for some pot roast? Forget the pot roast, Mother. Pot roast isn't for backstabbers. For persecutors. I won't share my meat with him. <laughs> my meat! My meat! Uh. <laughs> it's the truth. That's why. And I think you better be going, young man, before I call your mother and tell on you. Yeah, you are my mom with just a wig on. All right, I'll see you later, guys. <sighs> my meat! Oh, man. I think that's about enough for right now. I don't know how much we've got because I had to stop, start over again, and reset my computer. But, uh, hope you guys enjoy this, and we'll see you next time. Stay toasty, my friend.